Gabriel Garcia Marquez was a Colombian novelist, journalist, and short story writer who was born in Aracataca, Colombia, in 1927. He is best known for his novel One Hundred Years of Solitude, which was published in 1967 and won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1982. Garcia Marquez's writing is often characterized by its use of magical realism, a style that blends magical elements with realistic events. This style is evident in One Hundred Years of Solitude, which tells the story of the Buendia family, a fictional clan who live in the fictional town of Macondo. The novel is a multi-generational saga that spans over 100 years and chronicles the loves, losses, and triumphs of the Buendias. 100 Years of Solitude is a complex and challenging novel, but it is also a rewarding one. It is a story of love, loss, and the human spirit. It is a story that will stay with you long after you have finished reading it. Garcia Marquez was a master storyteller, and his work has had a profound impact on literature and culture. One Hundred Years of Solitude is considered one of the greatest novels of the 20th century, and it has been translated into over 30 languages. If you are a fan of magical realism, or if you are simply looking for a well-written and thought-provoking novel, I highly recommend reading One Hundred Years of Solitude. It is a truly remarkable work of literature. Here are some of the reasons why you should read One Hundred Years of Solitude, it is a classic novel that has stood the test of time. It is a beautifully written and engrossing story. It is a thought-provoking and challenging novel that will make you think about the world in a new way. It is a must-read for fans of magical realism. It is a Nobel Prize-winning novel, which is a testament to its quality. If you are looking for a novel that will transport you to another world, challenge your thinking, and stay with you long after you have finished reading it, then I highly recommend 100 Years of Solitude. The Summary of 100 Years of Solitude, Part 1, The Founding of Macondo The novel begins with the founding of the town of Macondo by José Arcadio Buendía and his wife Ursula Iguaran. José Arcadio is a visionary who dreams of creating a utopian community, while Ursula is a practical woman who helps to keep the town running. The Buendías are a large and complex family, and their descendants will go on to live in Macondo for over 100 years. The town of Macondo is a magical place where the ordinary and the extraordinary often intersect. For example, the Buendías patriarch, José Arcadio Buendía, is a brilliant inventor who creates a device that can predict the future. The town is also home to a gypsy woman named Melquiades, who sells magical objects and tells stories of far-off lands. One of the most important events in the early history of Macondo is the arrival of the train. The train brings new technology and new ideas to the town, and it also brings outsiders. The outsiders are often hostile to the Buendias and their way of life, and they eventually lead to the downfall of Macondo. Here is a more detailed look at the founding of Macondo, José Arcadio Buendía and Ursula Iguaran are married in a small village in the Colombian countryside. They decide to leave the village and start a new life in a place of their own. They travel for many days until they come to a clearing in the jungle. They decide to build their town there and call it Macondo. The town grows slowly at first, but it eventually becomes a thriving community. The Buendías have many children, and their descendants go on to live in Macondo for over 100 years. The founding of Macondo is a significant event in the novel. It is the beginning of the Buendía family story, and it is also the beginning of the town's history. The town of Macondo is a magical place, and it is a place where anything is possible. The Buendías are a complex and fascinating family, and their story is one of love, loss, and the human spirit. Part 2, The Rise and Fall of Macondo The town of Macondo experiences a period of great prosperity, but it is also a time of great violence. The Buendías are involved in many of the conflicts that plague Macondo, and they often pay a high price for their involvement. One of the most tragic events in the history of Macondo is the Civil War. The war is fought between the government and the rebels, and it leaves Macondo in ruins. 
The war also causes a great deal of death and destruction, and it leaves many people homeless. After the war, Makondo slowly begins to rebuild. The town experiences a period of peace and prosperity, but it is also a time of great change. The old ways of life are slowly dying out, and the new ways of life are often seen as a threat to the Buendias and their way of life. Here is a more detailed look at the rise and fall of Makondo. Makondo experiences a period of great prosperity in the early 1900s. The town is home to a thriving banana plantation, and the Buendias are among the wealthiest families in the region. However, the prosperity of Makondo is short lived. In the 1920s, the banana plantation is struck by a series of strikes and labor disputes. The strikes are brutally suppressed by the government, and the banana plantation is eventually shut down. The closure of the banana plantation leads to a period of great poverty and hardship in Makondo. The town is also hit by a series of natural disasters, including a hurricane and a drought. The combination of economic hardship and natural disasters leads to the decline of Makondo. By the end of the novel, Makondo is a ghost town, and the Buendia family is scattered. The rise and fall of Makondo is a cautionary tale about the dangers of greed and exploitation. It is also a story about the resilience of the human spirit. The Buendias are a complex and fascinating family, and their story is one of love, loss, and the human spirit. Part 3, The End of Makondo The novel ends with the destruction of Makondo. A hurricane wipes out the town, and the Buendia family is scattered. The novel ends with a sense of loss, but it also offers a message of hope. The Buendia story is a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope for a better future. The end of Makondo is a symbolic event. It represents the end of an era, and it also represents the end of the Buendia family story. The Buendias are a complex and fascinating family, and their story is one of love, loss, and the human spirit. Here is a more detailed look at the end of Makondo, a hurricane wipes out the town of Makondo. The hurricane is a metaphor for the forces of change and destruction that are always at work in the world. The destruction of Makondo represents the end of an era, and it also represents the end of the Buendia family story. The Buendias are a complex and fascinating family, and their story is one of love, loss, and the human spirit. The end of Makondo is a tragic event, but it is also a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope for a better future. The Buendia story is a reminder that the human spirit is resilient, and that even when things are at their worst, there is always hope for a better tomorrow. Thank you for listening to this introduction to 100 Years of Solitude. I hope you enjoyed it and that it has inspired you to read the novel itself. If you did enjoy the introduction, please consider supporting the channel by pressing the record button, liking, and publishing the content. Your support helps me to create more content like this, and it helps to spread the word about great books like 100 Years of Solitude. Thank you again for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Here are some other ways you can support the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Share the channel's content with your friends and family. Leave a comment or review. Thank you for your support.